Hi, my name is Adam from CAD Dimensions, and today we are talking about some of the challenges that businesses face when they're trying to optimize their manufacturing processes. In manufacturing, every second you spend uh, manufacturing your product uh, results in a, a higher cost item, or it can directly impact you know the, the type of profits that uh, that your company is seeing. Seeing as most of our customers are in the manufacturing sector, in the software side, in 3D design or for 3D printing, uh, we're, we're pretty close to, to these issues. So we wanted to, to discuss them and some of the ways that our technologies are, are able to help solve these issues. So to kind of set the stage here, when I look at manufacturing today, uh, I can't help but be impressed. Uh, when you take something simple like a, like a skateboard, essentially a, a piece of wood uh, with some wheels on it, uh, when you look a little bit closer, there's actually a lot of components uh, that go into it that have to be precisely assembled together uh, in a way that creates a, a high quality product. And they also have to be assembled together in a time effective manner in order to, to keep the cost down from for the for the end consumer. Uh, so even a, a simple product like a skateboard uh, has a lot of work that goes into it to create each of the opponent each of the various components, send them to the assembly plant, uh, assemble them together and then ship it all around the world uh, and still keep the costs low enough so that people can can afford to buy various products. Uh, but let's get a little bit more complicated. So when you look at like a car, uh, take this Toyota for example, they assemble over 30,000 parts to create a vehicle in around 18 hours. Uh, and I can't help but be impressed by that. And if you're familiar at all with manufacturing or lean manufacturing processes, uh, Toyota is kind of world renowned for helping to start a lot of the lean manufacturing and manufacturing optimization processes that we see in the world today. Uh, if you increase the scale a little bit, uh, what about an, an airplane? Well, this Boeing 737 has over 2.3 million parts in it. And if you kind of try to assume that Boeing is as efficient in manufacturing as Toyota, it would take them roughly 1,400 hours uh, to be able to put this airplane together. And both of these devices work in essentially life-threatening conditions. Now, we don't think of them as life-threatening because they're assembled reliably enough and at a repeatable level of quality across the, the various planes and cars that they're assembling that we don't think about just how dangerous uh, traveling in, in one of these devices can be. And that's because they, they have to have uh, an incredible attention to detail, uh, high-quality components, um, and still be assembled uh, reliably, uh, and time effectively to, to keep costs down for consumers. And so the amount of time it takes to assemble a product in a manufacturing environment is critical for the, the performance of the business and the performance of the product. So in the world today, manufacturing is, is pretty impressive. But how do we actually take manufacturing from the, the good impressiveness that it is uh, to great? And what we've seen a lot of customers do is optimize their manufacturing process by using assembly aids. And an assembly aid might be something uh, pretty simple, you know, a tool holder, um, uh, an alignment jig to align components uh, more quickly and effectively, um, a label placement jig, a drill guide, you know, relatively small things that end up making a big impact for businesses, but when you try to create these with conventional manufacturing processes like a three-axis mill, for example, it tends to just take a lot of time and money to, to be able to produce these. Most of our customers have a lot of constraints around the, the lead times in their in-house machine shops as is. And so the, the idea of using some of the resources they have in-house now for little things that are often denoted as, you know, nice-to-haves in a manufacturing environment it sounds crazy to them. And maybe something that uh, a lot of people don't think about when thinking about these assembly aids is that from a design standpoint, when you're looking at these, you always have to be thinking about, how can I make it? And so you have to design around the constraints of what is most often a three-axis mill, whether it's manual or computer-controlled. And so you have a lot of restrictions in what you can do in terms of undercuts uh, and angles and other features that might make uh, a lot of manufacturing aids 
uh, take a lot more design time, uh, which ends up costing companies more money because uh, engineering design time typically isn't the, the cheapest commodity around a business. And so what we've seen customers do is shift from more conventional manufacturing methods uh, to using 3D printing to create assembly aids much more cost effectively and much faster than they would have been able to with conventional manufacturing. With conventional manufacturing, uh, a lot of people don't make assembly aids because they would never see a return on investment for you know a multi-thousand dollar assembly aid or they can't afford uh, to bog down their machine shop any more than what they do now. And one of the biggest draws to 3D printing is that it changes the conversation from a design standpoint from asking how can I make it, how would I make this assembly aid, uh, and really allows the designer to focus on what they want the part to achieve, the function of the actual assembly aid. It changes the conversation over to what do I want this part to accomplish uh, because we're able to print with soluble support material uh, and create incredibly intricate geometries um, at, a, at a precision level uh, that is comfortable for uh, creating manufacturing assembly aids. So digging a little bit further into why 3D printing is, is great for this application is because, again, you're able to design for the function of what you want the part to accomplish. On top of that, you're able to make parts more ergonomic because of the, the design freedom that the 3D printing process allows making for, for a higher level of safety in a manufacturing environment, as well as you're able to make tools much more lightweight than you would if you were cutting them out of metal, because most 3D prints are, are hollow. And so the, the difference in weight between plastic and metal alone is, can be a big draw. <clears throat> but also the ability to, to make them partially hollow and easier to maneuver around uh, to reduce worker fatigue can be a, a big draw and, and big points for 3D printing. Again, on the note of capacity, uh, 3D printers are able to run unmanned overnight, uh, which is uh, much different than a machine shop worker who has to, to stand at a mill all day um, or work overtime to, to try to keep up with the demand placed on them by the, the needs of the company. And so it can drastically uh, not only add to, to manufacturing aids, but help to alleviate some of the, the tasks that a machine shop might be tasked with. And again, I just want to reiterate that 3D printing uh, manufacturing aids is able to create a lot of cost-effective quick little tools and improvements to your overall manufacturing process that can end up making a very big impact to the bottom line of a business. And next we're going to look at a, a couple examples. The first being one from Rutland Plastics who made a drill guide. And so when I look at this drill guide in particular, I try to think of how I would make this with conventional manufacturing. And so if you see here, you'd have to cut out the, the two areas under the, the wings on the, the sides of the drill guide. And then you'd probably have to uh, flip it over, refixture it in a three axis mill, and then cut out this center piece. But then it starts to get a little bit trickier. When you actually look at the hole that the drill bit gets guided through, that's at a very specific angle, a very specific distance from the two sides of the drill guide itself. And because of the angles involved, that's not something that you would actually be able to create with a typical three-axis mill, maybe unless you created specific tooling for the, uh, the process, meaning you're creating a tool just to create a tool for your manufacturing process. Rutland Plastics was able to 3D print this uh, at a fraction of the time and cost it would have taken them otherwise, and we'll dig more into those numbers in the next slide. Uh, but the real win here was that Rutland Plastics had tried to create uh, drill guides previously with conventional manufacturing methods, and all of them ended up scratching the, the A-face that they were drilling into, and so they were shipping out lower quality products than they wanted to, or they ended up scrapping a lot of their final products uh, when they got to this step in the production because the surface finish now wasn't up to par because the drill guide had scratched the surface. And so this tool was created with a very thin layer uh, of a rubber-like material on the bottom surface of this. That way it's able to, to mate up nice and softly with the workpiece and they're able to get a much more efficient uh, drilling process for this step in their manufacturing.
Our next example is from BMW. And so they use this tool to place most of the badges on their i3 series, I believe. And when you look at the shape of this, again, I try to think of, you know, how would I create this same shape with conventional manufacturing? And I think from a cost standpoint, you, you probably wouldn't. There's a, a lot of curves here. There's a lot of complicated features uh, that go into this badge placement tool um, and so the the big advantages that they saw here by using 3d printing compared to conventional manufacturing are it's way more ergonomic and it's a lot lighter weight than they would have been able to create with conventional manufacturing and a lot of those advantages come from being able to design with a lot more freedom than you're able to with conventional manufacturing Next, you can see a, a couple quotes on the screen there talking about how much Rutland Plastics and BMW both love 3D printing and how it's helped out their business. But let's look at some of the numbers behind those two examples we looked at in the last slide. And so looking at those numbers, uh, they, they certainly look pretty impressive when you compare the cost of CNC machining those tools compared to what it took them with PolyJet or FDM 3D printing. We're really focusing on time here today, and so looking at the time alone, Rutland Plastics was able to create uh, their drill guide 66% faster than they would have been able to with conventional machining, and BMW was able to create this tool 92% faster than they would have been able to with conventional manufacturing. And so comparing these, you're looking at you know 18 days of machine time or lead time compared to only a day and a half on FDM, meaning that for an extra 16 and a half days, they were able to have greater manufacturing efficiency because they got this tool on the floor faster. And I guess that goes back to some of the, the overnight 3D printing aspects. So you're able to, to run your 3D printer overnight and have a tool the next day to start testing in your manufacturing environment. We've got another example from Ford who started seeing a lot of demand an increase uh, for their Ford Expedition. And so they had to start to try to think differently about their overall manufacturing process, part of which involved employing another 400 robots to help them out with their manufacturing process. But looking into their, their prototyping and tooling needs, previously they were spending eight to 16 weeks and sometimes up to a quarter of a million dollars uh, in tooling alone just to create uh, their prototypes and manufacturing aids. And by implementing 3D printing, they were able to cut that down to only a few days um, for around $2,000 in material uh, for their end use part. So again, substantial time savings here when you're talking about uh, two to four months is what eight to 16 weeks equates to. That's a significant chunk, you know, a third of your year, cutting that down to only a few days. And in our next slide, uh, we'll show a quick video that talks about a lot of the, the manufacturing challenges and why 3D printing is a good fit. Hier sehen Sie einige 3D gedruckte Hilfswerkzeuge, die wir bei uns in der Fahrzeugproduktion im Einsatz haben. Mein Name ist Sascha Holl. Ich arbeite im Technischen Entwicklungszentrum von Opel in Rüsselsheim. Opel ist der drittgrößte Automobilhersteller in Europa. Zusammen mit Vauxhall wurden 2014 über eine Million Autos verkauft. Hier bei Opel nutzen wir 3D gedruckte Werkzeuge unter anderem zum Anbringen der Schwellerverkleidung, des Dachspoilers. Oder auch zum Positionieren des Adam Schriftzuges auf der hinteren Seitenscheibe und für die Montage des Glasdachs vom Adam. Im Hintergrund sehen Sie die Montage des, des Dachmoduls, einmal das Faltdach, einmal das Glasdach, wo wir mit 3D-Hilfsmitteln die Position des Daches am Fahrzeug bestimmen. Die Nutzung von 3D gedruckten Werkzeugen der Firma Stratasys gibt uns die Möglichkeit, den Mitarbeiter an der Linie in den Entwicklungsprozess mit einzubeziehen, dadurch, dass er sich die Konzepte, Designs anschauen kann und seinen Erfahrungsschatz mit in das Produkt einfließen lassen kann. 
Durch die Anwendung von 3D-Druck sind wir in der Lage, die Entwicklungszeiten für neue Werkzeuge extrem zu verkürzen. In der frühen Prototypphase eines Fahrzeuges können wir innerhalb eines Tages ähm, ein Werkzeug neu konstruieren, über Nacht ausdrucken, sodass es am nächsten Tag schon für die Werker zur Verfügung steht. Durch die Anwendung von 3D-Druck haben wir nicht nur erhebliche Zeitersparnis, sondern auch erhebliche Kostenersparnis. Bei den Fertigungshilfsmitteln sind wir in der Lage, zwischen 10 und sogar bis zu 90 Prozent Kosteneinsparungen zu erzielen. Und außerdem sind wir in der Lage, die Werkzeuge viel individueller zu gestalten, weil wir durch den 3D-Drucker in der Lage sind, alle möglichen Formen und Konturen herzustellen, sodass wir das Werkzeug viel besser auf den Werker und auch auf das Fahrzeug anpassen können. 3D gedruckte Werkzeuge von der Firma Satisys ermöglichen es meinem Team, optimale und bedarfsgerechte Lösungen zu finden und zu implementieren. Aktuell werden 3D gedruckte Montagehilfsmittel aber nicht nur bei Opel in Europa eingesetzt, sondern weltweit in allen GM-Werken. All of these manufacturing applications really wouldn't be possible without uh, strong enough materials to, to be able to stand up to uh, a manufacturing environment for different applications. And so pretty quickly we're going to run through some of the, the common tiers of 3D printing plastics. Uh, the standard plastic family is generally ABS and a few different variations thereof. ABS is what, you know, your Xbox controller or Legos are made out of. So a great general purpose plastic that can stand, you know, a reasonable amount of abuse when it's used for things for, like, alignment guides in a manufacturing environment. On the engineering tier of plastic, we have polycarbonates and nylons and a few different variations. And then we have our high performance tier uh, with Altem, which is the, the trademark name for PEI, uh, or carbon fiber filled nylon composite 3D printing materials. Looking at our standard family of plastics, uh, the one that I really wanted to point out was ABS ESD7. And so this is a statically dissipative blend of ABS, if you will, uh, that a lot of electronics manufacturers use uh, for their placement and assembly aids uh, in industry today because they have very strict restrictions around the types of surfaces that are allowed to come in contact with electronics while they're being assembled. Moving up into engineering tier, uh, these are for things that are going to require a little bit more abuse in a manufacturing environment. So nylon in a couple different blends is extremely chemically resistant, uh, and then polycarbonate uh, is what they commonly make bulletproof glass out of. And so this is a very tough, rigid material uh, that can be used for, for more demanding applications. But for, the most but for the most demanding applications, we'll move over to our high performance tier uh, with a couple different blends of Altem that we can help you custom tailor uh, depending on what your application need is or carbon fiber filled nylon 12. And so these high performance materials are actually able to compete with uh, or replace tooling or prototypes that were typically made out of metal because of their, their high temperature and chemical resistance performance. Uh, so in the next slide, we'll take a look at how one of our customers uses carbon fiber filled nylon 12 uh, in not only manufacturing aids, but also end use parts uh, for their products. My name is Ashley Guy, and I'm the president and founder of Utah Trikes. We have built our business on customization, and 3D printing has led us to the next level. So Nylon 12 CF has made 3D printing a production reality. We can make parts faster. We can go to prototype within just a couple weeks not even just prototypes, but we can actually design a part that we know will work from experience, print it out, and a couple hours later, we now have a viable part. Parts that would flex with Nylon 12 were as stiff as we needed them to be now with the Nylon 12 CF, 
and parts that would potentially break with the Ultim 1010 were now as strong as we needed them to be. The Nylon 12 CF material has really reached into almost all aspects of our production at this point. We're using it for jigs and fixtures, drill guides, machine tools. The increased efficiency that this material and process has given us allows us to spend more time with our customers, more time growing our business and becoming more productive than ever. This has made our customers happier, it's made our employees happier, and it's made our accountant happier. On the polyjet side of things, we're not quite in a pyramid, but the, the families of materials are broken up a little bit differently. We have our rigid plastics, Vero and Vero Flex. We have flexible rubber-like plastics that go by the family names of Tango or Agilis. And we have our advanced family of plastics, which is really what we call digital materials that I'll touch on more in a second here. The big advantage of polyjet 3D printing is that you're able to print in much finer layers. It's a, a liquid jetting process that's cured by UV light. And so because we're printing in much finer layers, you're able to get beautiful prints with fantastic surface finish that rivals the type of quality that you would get from injection molded parts. And you can see some examples of those on this slide here. But what happens when you blend a, a rigid resin with a flexible resin? That creates what we call a digital material, and this is a huge advantage on polyjet systems to be able to create uh, a wide array uh, of different materials by blending them together to create different levels of shore values, uh, different levels of flexibility uh, throughout the materials so that you can kind of custom tailor uh, your prototypes or your manufacturing aids to exactly the sort of application that you're going for. But probably the, the most popular and most useful in a manufacturing environment digital material is one that we call digital ABS. And so digital ABS is used to create prototype injection molds. And Turk is only one of a ton of different companies that started doing this in order to, to save money. Injection molds are notoriously expensive and take up a long time to have made. And so Turk started using digital ABS in order to, to prove out their designs for an injection mold and ultimately get uh, sample parts in customers' hands way faster than they were previously, which led to them getting a lot more business. Previously, they found they were losing out on a lot of jobs they weren't even able to bid on. Uh, because of the tight time requirements associated with giving parts in hand. So they took their prototyping mold making time from around 10 weeks, so over two months, down to only a few days after implementing uh, Connex Polyjet technology. By doing this, they were able to deliver a custom product with a production mold to their customers in only four months compared to six months, allowing them to get a lot more business. Uh, one deal in particular that secured them an extra $7 million of revenue. And again, looking at manufacturing efficiency and how time affects the, the bottom line of a business, I think this is a fantastic example. Uh, and looking at 97% uh, increase uh, in getting prototype molds and parts to customers faster certainly helped them out a lot. Before we wrap up today, I wanted to highlight one more application that we're seeing growing for a lot of businesses. And that application is on the finishing side. So when a product starts to get towards the, the end of the production line uh, and it has to be painted or sealed or maybe a surface needs to be uh, chemically treated uh, in the middle of the process, a lot of companies use pretty outdated methods uh, like masking tape to, to be able to block off areas that shouldn't be painted. Um, and if a, a company is uh, really on their game and want to have a more repeatable process, sometimes they might have a, a sheet metal stencil made uh, to speed up the process. But having one of those made can be expensive and take around four weeks from what we've seen. And so 3D printing can, can help alleviate this finishing challenges. One such company that started using 3D printing in this area is called Epsi. So Epsi actually creates masking tools. And just so we're all on the same page about what they make here, uh, they make all of these rubber 3D 
uh, masking tools. And so the, the work piece here is this blue metal part that needs to be painted. And so they would create uh, these rubber stopper like things to create uh, to prevent the paint from getting into the, the critical surfaces on the inside of that part. And one thing that, that kind of hit me as I was reading through this is that if a, a masking tool company thinks that masking tools take too long to produce, uh, then that's probably a good indication that if your company uses masking tools that you're waiting longer than you should have to uh, to get your masking tools made. By implementing 3D printing, they're able to get parts to their customers 45% faster than they were previously, which drove an increase of sales of around 12% for a pretty impressive return on investment uh, by implementing 3D printing for their business. All these solutions are, are made possible through Stratasys 3D printing technologies. Uh, Stratasys has been the world leader in 3D printing for, for quite a while, um, offering a, a range of 3D printers uh, aimed to, to do all the things we've talked about here today, allowing companies to create manufacturing aids at a fraction of the cost that they would see from traditional machining. So wrapping things up here, Manufacturing is, is pretty impressive in the modern world. I think we can all agree on, on that. Uh, consumers have a, a wide range of quality and products to choose from, uh, shipped to their door uh, or at retail outlets uh, in, a, in a very impressive uh, manner. Uh, but when we try to take manufacturing from the good, impressive nature that it is to, to optimize it and make it great, we end up seeing a lot of companies turn to manufacturing aids, but when you try to make those conventionally, they end up being very expensive with long lead times, preventing that company from ever seeing a real return on investment uh, from creating those assembly aids. By creating assembly aids with 3D printing instead, uh, you're able to create tools overnight while, uh, while you're sleeping and implement them into the manufacturing floor the next day, decrease the time it takes to actually design assembly aids, leading to an overall improved product quality and more of an optimized workflow in your manufacturing environment. I wanted to say thank you for taking the time out of your day to, to watch this quick video. Uh, if you have any questions at all, or maybe you're wondering how 3D printing might be able to help your manufacturing environment, feel free to, to go to our website for more, for more information at caddimensions.com, or give us a call, shoot me an email, and we'll see what we can do to possibly help. Uh, my name is Adam from CAD Dimensions, and thank you for watching.